Good afternoon and thanks for joining us today. I'm Molly Day on staff here with the National Small Business Association. And I think we've got a great program set up for you today. Um, everybody's talking about August recess and, and most lawmakers are back in their state and districts. And uh, while, while they're taking a recess, we all know that uh, small business doesn't ever take a recess. Uh, and so it's really important that we try and reach out to folks now. And on this session today, we're gonna show you exactly how to do that, how to make it easier, some of the great resources the NSBA has. And we've got a, a really fantastic expert here to talk to you about about social media and how to engage with lawmakers that way. So um, we're gonna turn it over to our great speakers. First, you're gonna hear from Todd McCracken, who's the president and CEO of NSBA. Next, you're gonna hear from Esther Manzon Aguirre. I, I'm sorry, I know you just told me and I, I stumbling over the words, um, but she's, she's a social media and marketing guru down in Florida and has some really great tips for you. Then we're gonna kick it over to Reed Westcott, who is our director of federal policy, and he's gonna give you all the great resources that NSBA has and also talk about some of the hot issues facing small business right now. And uh, then we're gonna talk a bit about our upcoming event, the Washington Presentation, which is a not to be missed event. I think um, hopefully most of you are registered. If not, we'll be sure to get you the links at the uh, in the chat and at the end of the session. Um, and with that, I'm going to um, uh, just a couple ground rules. Uh, we'd like to keep the chat clear. So please don't um, do too much chatting in there. That's where we're gonna have you insert uh, or put in your questions if you have any. We will be doing Q&A at the end of the session. We'll make sure that we have plenty of time for that. So go ahead and chat any questions you have. Um, we are gonna keep everybody on mute because we're expecting well over hundred people to be joining us today. So uh, we just wanna make sure that the, uh, the sound clutter stays to a minimum. So um, with that, I'm happy to turn it over to you, Todd. Thank you very much, Molly, and thank you all for joining us today. Really appreciate you taking the time out of your uh, uh, summer to to talk to us. Uh, it it really is important what you all do in making connections and 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 advocating uh, with your members of Congress. Uh, I've been doing small business advocacy now for over thirty years, and I can tell you, in my time in Washington, you've really seen a significant change. Constituent relations has always been important. But over the last couple of decades, we've really seen a significant shift away from Washington-based organizations and what lobbyists do, and more to the states and regions and, and politicians wanting to connect directly with, with constituents more, more effectively. Um, so it makes your role in this organization all the more important. It's not just us sitting here in Washington that, that, that communicate, but what you all do and the relationships you build over time. Um, that, that really matters. We want to talk to you about how to do that because as you probably know, members of Congress are overwhelmed with information, overwhelmed with people who want to talk to them. Uh, and you got to find ways to, 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 um, to, to break through that and to, and to give them things they can actually hold on to or remember and that, that they can um, use in their day-to-day -day work as they think about the issues that, that matter to us and, and matter to them. We're gonna make them matter. To, they're gonna make our issues matter to them is the, is the bottom line. So there's actually a really interesting uh, uh, survey that, that, that's come out that sort of that asks members of Congress uh, about messages they receive and what makes them you know, helpful to them uh, because you see a lot of uh, people who think that, that signing a petition or just calling and saying, hey, vote against this, vote for that is, is going to make a big difference. And while it's better than nothing, uh, what members really want to know is how is something going to actually affect uh, your business, you personally, the state, uh, the, 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 the town you live in, uh, et cetera. Uh, and they really want uh, some specifics from you. Um, and so, uh, as you can see in this chart, when, when they're asked about what really, uh, what really matters, um, what's really helpful to them, it really is the, that level of specificity um, that, that really matters. So as, as you work with people, uh, think about what, what you can, what you can talk to them about how you can convey real impacts. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, and how you can do that uh, as we move forward. But personal stories and direct impacts on your business and your community are, are really the key things that we wanna, that we wanna stress here. Um, and you know, the next thing I wanted to talk about is are those relationships? Because when it's even if you have a great message, if you don't have a relationship where they will listen to you, they may fall on deaf ears. There's actually, the, we're going to the next slide here. And that is, um, uh, 
we did the, the Rasmus and the polling company did a survey of, of folks on Capitol Hill and asked them about influence. Um, and it's the constituent interactions that have a bigger influence on their decisions than you know, all the advocacy strategies that small business and other organizations in this town uh, put together. Um, and they, they, it really matters if they have folks back home that they feel that they can trust and that are, that are telling them the real story, that are giving them the information about how something actually will affect them. Um, it really does matter to them. And they report that that's, that's who they listen to. That has a big influence on their, um, uh, their thinking. Um, and so that's one of the reasons we want to arm you with the skills to, to develop those long-term relationships. And whenever you go to a member of Congress to talk, it's always good to have a, something, some reason for calling, some reason for visiting, some ask. But you should always have in your mind that you're building a long-term relationship. You're giving them reasons to, to see you and your connections as useful, to see you as having expertise and, and someone who can help them, not just right now, not just on this issue, but, 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 for, the, but, but for the long term. Um, and uh, so if we go back on to the next slide here, that's um, uh, beyond the Rasmussen survey, uh, sort of tips from Capitol Hill, you know, it, it's also really good when you go in, don't go in blind. You, you need to know something about your member of Congress. If you're going in to tell them to vote for or against something, and they've been they've been on the opposite side of it for the last decade and voted the, the, the wrong way a myriad times, that meeting probably isn't going to change their mind. So think about what you can get from them, right? Think about why why you're in a disagreement with them but then say, and I understand we disagree, but here's something you can do for small business. Here's something that might appeal to that member of Congress, because you have to remember, they're not just dealing with the one issue that might be hot that day. There are all kinds of things they're going to be dealing with in the months and years ahead that directly affect small business. And if they feel like they're on the wrong side of small business on this issue, they're going to look for some place they can be on the right side of small business. So help them find that. Uh, think about the kinds of things they're interested in, the kinds of things that might help their district back home. Uh, and I think that's one of the ways to really build a, 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 a strong relationship. So don't just think about the one issue that has you there that day, but think about the forces that affect that member of Congress uh, and where they can be helpful to us. Because I mean, there's we're bipartisan and there's plenty of stuff that folks on either side of the aisle can support us on we just have to find the right things and, and help them find those right things as well. Um, so, uh, uh, and why why do they want to find the right things? And that is, you know, this is the next slide because no matter where people stand on the partisan spectrum, everybody wants to be the friend of small business. If you look at national surveys of the, uh, of of who do the American people trust? Right now, small business small business owners are at the very top. Um, our problem is we're, we're, we're dispersed and we're diverse and we have lots of issues going on. And so different politicians can find different things. We have to make that a strength. We have to make that a strength for us uh, because everyone wants to be our friend. We have to make sure they understand how to be our friend, what matters, what doesn't matter. Uh, uh, because small business, they know that small business matters. More than 70 million people work in small business. It's almost every firm in the country um, creates the vast majority of new jobs every year. It's the main source of innovation in our economy. Uh, and this, our thriving small business community is the primary reason that for the success of the American economy over the last century and more. Uh, I, I think most members of Congress know that. They may disagree on how to nurture it, how to grow it, and how to be its friend, but they all want to do that at some level. Uh, so, so when you go into any of these meetings, remember that. Uh, that you may have some disagreement with them on a particular issue. You may have a partisan divide with them, but uh, there are very few small business, excuse me, very few members of Congress who don't want to be at some level on the side of small business. Uh, so we have to find ways, often creative ways, but certainly ways to uh, to, to use that and to, uh, to to make that fact our friend. Uh, so I, I'm 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 
I'm, there's a myriad of ways we can do that. And we're going to get into some more specifics of that uh, as we move forward here. I, I, I'm really pleased and honored to have uh, Esther with us today. She's, she's uh, a, a great small business leader in her own right, but also provides, I think, real expertise on sort of social media components for how you can uh, uh, promote your issues, uh, be influential with members of Congress, and, and help build those relationships. So I'm going to turn it over to Esther now. Uh, she can talk about some of those specifics, and then we'll have Reed Westcott, and then we'll come back to, to you and maybe answer some questions and, and talk about some of our events coming up. Esther, thanks for being here. Great. Thank you, Todd. That was some um, really interesting information and very helpful, and I think that um, Spot on, right? Um, and we're we're going to dovetail into some of those issues. And before we begin, I just want to tell you all a little bit about myself. Um, I spent a lot of years as a card carrying lobbyist and um, in the political universe. And today, my firm um, has uh, is a is a strategic communications firm. We have implemented. Uh, a series of advocacy campaigns. Um, and I remember starting uh, using uh, stuffing envelopes, sending postcards, calling members, elected members on the phone, and even, um, you know, shutting down servers with emails because governments weren't prepared to handle those emails, you know. And now, you know, the question is, what is the best way and how do we engage, um, as Todd was talking about, with our members of Congress and how do we hear from them? So we're going to talk very briefly today about some top level ideas, some tips to, for you to use and um, to kind of figure out what is the best way to use social media um, to advocate on behalf of NSBA and on, BA, on behalf of small businesses in general. Um, so go ahead and next slide. Um, so what are the benefits you know, to using social media? And I recently heard a, um, a quote that said, advocacy on small on uh, social media can propel an issue because it unlocks networking power and builds one-on-one -on -one relationships, which is key to advocacy. And why did that happen on social media? Because you have direct access to those representatives. Um, our messages can develop a wider reach. People can share and, and read information that they wouldn't normally have heard from. I can hear from someone in Colorado or in Texas because I, I follow them. Um, we have real-time interaction with our elected officials. And I'd say real-time, it's not the same as Hertz or American Airlines, but um, it's pretty instantaneous. And you can see if, um, uh, if, their, if their positions are changing in response to our social media posts. And it also provides a certain level of accountability and transparency because it's out in the public domain, right? So when we're talking next, um, to uh, social media, what are we talking about today? You know, what, what are the platforms? Go ahead and switch that, Molly. Um, so across the world, right, the king of the hill is obviously Facebook with over 253 billion um, users. And you'll notice on here, it runs kind of the gamut of what social media is. And one of the things you won't notice to, that you'll notice today that you don't see on here is Twitter and obviously threads is relatively new, um, but you don't see Twitter. Um, and we're gonna come back to that in a couple of seconds, but obviously it doesn't have that kind of impact on a worldwide basis. And some of you may not have heard about Douyin, which um, I had not. And it is actually the TikTok of um, mainland China and it has over 730 million users. So we're gonna look now as to you say, wow, that's a, that's a lot of platforms that I gotta look at. But really and truly, we're gonna focus just on what our audience, which is the 541 members of Congress are using. Next. Um, and where and how often are they using it and what are they doing? So if you look, it's pretty, down, it's pretty much down to the members of Congress on four big platforms. Virtually every member is on Facebook and Twitter, and then it kind of rolls down with YouTube and Instagram. Next. Um, and so one of the things that we wanna do, and I know that Reed is gonna talk a little bit more about that, is identify and look at our um, elected and see what platforms they're on. Look and see, kind of look at what they are posting about, look at to 
what they're what they're saying and in what mediums they're what platforms they're using and then tailor your engagement um, to those as well. Next. Um, I've given you here three examples from my members, right, that I know about. So Senator Rubio, Marco Rubio is um, the senior senator from Florida. He is actually one of the most prolific um, posters and social media users in Congress, usually in the top five um, of the 541. And he recently, um, he always posts about, you know, his positions um, on different issues, also talks about his faith and his family, but he's also a big sports fanatic. And he recently posted on Instagram welcoming um, Lionel Messi to um, South Florida, who um, just became a part of uh, Inter Miami, a soccer league um, here in Miami, a soccer team here in Miami. And it's no accident, I don't think, that Senator Rubio tagged uh, Mr. Messi because Mr. Messi has um, the second largest number of followers on Instagram in the world with almost 500 million followers. So clearly, Senator Rubio is going to increase his reach, increase the eyeballs on his posts, right? So I thought that was kind of an interesting thing for you to notice. My uh, congressman, Congressman Carlos Jimenez from South Florida, um, he posts more or less uh, kind of regularly, uh, primarily on Facebook and Twitter about his social media uh, or rather his positions on different political issues. And here during the break, he posted about his recent visit to Homestead Air Force B Base and his um, service on the Armed Services Committee. So that's a great place if you haven't engaged with your member, if they put something like that and you're either a retired, if you're a vet or you have um, a parent or a spouse that was a vet, that's a great way to kind of start to engage with that um, member. And then the other one that I wanted to um, highlight, even though she's not my congresswoman, is a longtime member of the Florida delegation, Congresswoman um, Wilson. And she is also a very prolific uh, poster. And she recently did us a favor and actually asked for us to engage with her on Twitter. Um, she posted about um, Black businesses and supporting local and small businesses and asked to please share your experience with local black business. So, you know, those are the kinds of things you want to look at and you want to see, you know, how can you begin to engage with those members? Next. Um, so pick your platform and find out what your member is doing. And then and next, and then we're going to talk about a little bit about crafting your message, right? And the most important thing I can tell you is to be authentic, as you know, Todd was saying. Be very focused about what you're talking about. Avoid jargon. And I know that's kind of like an oxymoron when um, Washington is, you know, the alphabet soup of jargon, right? But um, personalize that message. And I like to take it, and since we're going back to school this month, um, I like to think about having you all do a little bit of homework and using kind of the Disney model, right, for your story, develop your story and have that be the plot, the basis for your content, right? So Disney always has a once upon a time, then there were some, you know, crazy hijinks along the journey, and then we all lived happily ever after, right? So you could, in essence, craft a story where once upon a time, I was a member of the armed services. And when I retired, I wanted to have a coffee shop. And in 2020, I did. And I opened a store, a cafe on Main Street. I employed 20 people and we served a thousand cups of coffee. But then the pandemic hit and we thought we weren't going to survive. But lo and behold, PPP and an SBA loan not only helped us to survive, but to thrive. And now we're opening up a second store on Elm Street. However, those credit card fees might kill us. And so in order for us to continue, we need you to take action. So you kind of want to be able to develop that Disney story and figure out what is your story. Be concise and um, be authentic and also use visuals that work with that platform. So we know that on Instagram, for example, it's much more video, much more pictures. Um, and on Facebook, people tend to linger a little longer. So you can add more than one or two pictures. Next. And then um, Molly wanted me to touch a little bit on um, hashtags, right? And so hashtags and trending is, 
um, very critical and very important. And Molly and her team, you know, develop um, some great hashtags for us. I know they're going to do one for um, the, fl the fly-in in September. Um, and that helps us to increase visibility. Um, and also, you can use them when you're looking at different trending topics. As I said, you know, we're back to school. I'm sure that that's going to be trending on social media right now. Um, and also tagging people, as Senator Rubio did with um, Lionel Messi, to increase visibility. And you want to avoid overutilizing hashtags. And people are often asking us, you know, next, what um, is the right number of hashtags? And we've all seen them you know, where people have, you know, like 20 hashtags on a post, and it's just like, you're not really sure. But apparently, according to experts, um, the, the magic number, the, the sweet spot seems to be two, one to two hashtags per post, right? Anything with more than that engagement seems to drop by like 17%. Um, and when you have one or two hashtags, that increases your engagement by about 21%. So um, keep that in mind when you are posting. Go ahead, next. Um, again, the key to all of this is building relationships, as, um, as uh, Todd was saying, right? You want to be respectful. Um, hopefully, your member or um, someone will also interact with you, and you want to be able to respond promptly. And and express their gratitude, you know, that's or your gratitude for their position. Um, and be very focused on those, um, on facts. Try not to um, use hyperbole when possible. Try to offer solutions as well. Next. And get your friends um, and as well as colleagues to engage with um, members as well, so that you can share and repost and comment on each other's posts, which increases the um, engagement and also helps the members to see that it's not just this one singular person having this conversation. And collaborate with other groups, not only like the, NS the NSBA, but also professional groups, chambers, um, or different um, member groups. So for example, I just recently started um, following the uh, Hispanic Congressional Caucus, um, which is members from both sides of the aisle, but with um, a Hispanic um, that are of Hispanic descent. And so you want to look at collaborating with other groups. Next. And then, as with anything in business, you want to monitor and measure the impact of your posts, right? And so most of these platforms that we're going to focus on, which is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they all have ways for you to look at analytics. And I would say, you know, try to stay away from just looking at your vanity posts, which um, or your vanity uh, metrics, which are basically the number of followers, um, because you could have one follower. And they could repost, it could be Lionel Messi, and it goes out to the universe, right? So don't just look at that, but rather look at, go dig a little deeper, see which posts are actually getting traction. If you change up, you know, your hashtags, if you're using videos, if you're using pictures, if you're tagging certain people, look and see what is actually working and don't be afraid to adjust your posts um, based on those, on those metrics, right? And then finally, I would just encourage you, the last slide here is to um, engage with NSBA, um, Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And then I would just leave you with this um, parting thought, right, is don't use social media to impress people, but rather use social media to impact people. And think of it as a, as a tool that you can impact and make a difference um, almost instantaneously, but it does take a little bit of effort. So Reed, help us out here next. Thank you so much, Esther. I really appreciate it. That's fantastic. Um, so nice to meet everybody. Uh, if we haven't met before, my name is Reed Westcott. I'm the director of federal policy here at NSBA, working uh, as our, our, our lobbyist here on the federal side. Um, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit more of the, the tactical side of some of this. So um, Esther outlined a lot of the social media, which is really, really crucial, especially for, for small businesses to make sure their voice is heard by the, the, not only their lawmakers, but by lawmakers writ large. 
And Todd kind of gave us this, this broad overarching strategy of, of why this matters. But I want to make sure that we equip you guys with the tools to be able to go and take this to the street and make some make some make something happen. Um, so the first thing you can do is to identify the lawmakers and key staffers that, that matter for your business and matter to your district. So generally speaking, um, kind of I think as we covered before, your home representatives are going to be the ones who are most responsive to what you bring to them. Uh, they're they're heavily motivated. They want to make sure that people in their district are uh, doing well, the businesses in their district are doing well, and there are multiple tools, I believe, linked through our website here, uh, as well as uh, on uh, the uh, on congressional official websites to track down exactly who your member is, make sure if you don't already have them kind of set up. Um, and if you do outreach to their office, uh, they, that goes a long way. Um, so building relationships with the office doesn't just mean the member, it also means their staff. Uh, when you call in, as much as we all wish it would be this way, the member is uh, not usually the one answering the phone. <laughs> Uh, normally, you got to get through their staff to make sure you get them the message. Um, so calling or emailing is fine. And, and just be ready to, to have a nice little conversation with a staff member. They're uh, almost always very, very friendly, eager to help, want to make sure that you're getting uh, you're getting the best kind of service you can out of their office. Um, so when you have that conversation with them and you sit down with a staffer, um, once you've got, kind of gotten past the initial kind of uh, screening there, you should start with the, a small business legislative aid. Uh, you, we have we have a few on our website. We have we have uh, materials that we have linked here and that uh, you can find on our website that will uh, really, really help you kind of make your pitch and understand kind of where you're coming from on this. Um, you should go into the specific ask, too. Um, they they want to make sure that when you come in, you're coming in with something actionable. As much as they love talking to constituents, getting their message out, making sure they've got a touch point. They, like like every business owner, want to make sure that what they're doing is, is actionable and they have priorities that they can immediately uh, take, and, take and work on. Um, so for that, uh, we, we have a few things, like I've been saying, listed on our website that are specific priorities for NSBA. I'm sure you have individual priorities for your business too. Um, and if you go in with those, it's going to make the meeting a lot more effective. Um, the next thing you can do is take those issue briefs or, or the materials you've prepared um, and try to explain the issue and the broader impact on small business, on your small business, on your community. Uh, they, they respond really, really well to this, as we've been kind of highlighting here. Uh, the, the more localized you can make that uh, make that impact uh, appear, um, or the more you can highlight the, the uh, local impact of whatever the issue is, the more likely they are to really take action to really run with it. So that's really, really helpful for folks. Um, and then another thing is offering up how you can help. So like all of us here, uh, we, we all get by by making sure that we're all part of a broader community that's helping each other out. We've got, everyone's got their contacts that'll help them with, with one thing or another. And, and a, a member of Congress's office is no different. When they know they have someone in the district they can reach out to on a specific issue or with a question, or if they're in the district and they, they want to go visit, uh, do a site visit or something like that, that's a really, really important uh, part of the advocacy portfolio here that we have. Um, and folks who do that have a, have a really, really good track record of making sure that they have a, a effective uh, advocacy. Um, like I was saying there, if you invite them uh, to your place of business, that's a fantastic thing uh, you can do. Um, if you want to invite your folks or have other local businesses come by, that also just improves the, uh, the, the quality of the outreach that you're, that you're getting there. Um, the, the more folks you can kind of bring in and the more impact you can demonstrate in your community, the happier that member is going to be, one, to be there, and then, two, the more they're going to learn from it because they learn from every, every one of the community every day they're out there doing outreach. Um, so we have detailed guidelines that you can also download. I, I, I apologize. I feel like I'm, I'm throwing a lot of things at you, but I promise it's all on our website. We've got a whole bunch of toolkits and great stuff for you. Um, we have detailed guidelines on what you should be doing when you're hosting members of Congress because it's it's a little bit kind of complicated sometimes. There's some intricacies to it. We want to make sure that everybody has the best experience they possibly can from it. Um, and then uh, after that, as Jesper was saying, what, what you need to do is capitalize on the access you have to politicians on social media um, and just make sure you're interacting with them as much as possible and trying to get your message out. Um, that that Disney story ain't going to tell itself. <laughs> uh, can we move on to the next one? So here's, as I've been talking about some of our resources, this is just a quick map of a uh, portion of our site to show you kind of where some of these things live. So if you want to get issue briefs, we have really, really detailed uh, one pagers on a whole bunch of the uh, top issues facing small businesses on our website. Um, so if you go through and you click through, you can buy uh, different committee at NSBA, figure out where the issues are, and you can also find um, a one pager uh, covering all 10 and then a one pager for each issue when you, through when you get there. Um, those are very, very helpful, and it'll make sure that in just a couple of minutes of, of prep work and reading through that really quickly, you can be in a great position to inform your member of Congress and have a really, really good persuasive conversation with them. Um, we also have uh, action alerts uh, linked on our page as well. 
um, which is a really, really phenomenal tool. Um, so what that enables you to do is with a, with a couple of pieces of data entry, a zip code and a couple other things, um, you can send a, a letter, an email, uh, correspondence of a couple of different kinds to your member of Congress and make sure that they're seeing your name, your business, what your uh, what issues you're interested in. We can push that out to folks. That's, it's a really, really helpful thing to show not just the impact of your small business, but the impact of NSBA. It, it comes back and it makes our entire community stronger. So uh, we really, really encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, can we pop on to the next one here? So I just wanted to highlight a couple of things for folks that are uh, newer issues. So a lot of what's on our website is stuff that we've decided uh, NSBA should take action on for the entire duration of the 118th Congress, which is two years. Um, but there are obviously flyer issues that come up and then things that pop every once in a while. We want to make sure we highlight a few really, really important ones here. So the Credit Card Competition Act is the first one that we have up here. Um, so uh, as I say on the slide here, right now Visa and MasterCard have an effective duopoly on the market for credit card processing. Um, that's really, really not good for small merchants. I mean, uh, for folks on the call, how many times have you been to uh, a convenience store, a pizza uh, spot, um, any number of places in, in your hometown and seen a sign that says, I'm so sorry, we can't take credit card transactions under $5, 10 $15, whatever it is, because that eats so significantly into folks' profits. Um, if if uh, small businesses, many of whom are, are, I'm sure, on the call and many of whom are part of NSBA, uh, want to continue to take uh, those transactions, they're cutting into their own paycheck to do it right now based on the way the system's uh, structured. So we're really heavily pushing this legislation to make sure that we're giving small businesses a fair fight here, that we can uh, actually make sure that uh, Visa, MasterCard, big banks, and, and these kind of uh, conglomerates are not taking advantage of the business that's flowing through our, our small business shops across the country. Um, big, big point there is that the average American family doesn't know it, but they pay an extra $1,000 a year in just these swipe fees um, for, for the goods and services that they're, they're paying for. So it's, it's really, it impacts everybody. It, it hits you in the wallet. Um, and you, you really will notice it after a point. So uh, we want to make sure that we're, we're messaging that out to folks. Um, we also have the Main Street Tax Certainty Act, uh, which is a bill that came out uh, earlier this year. So uh, taxation is one of the biggest issues for NSBA. Uh, small businesses have a, a host of issues with taxation at a, at a few different levels. But one of the biggest things is that many small businesses are structured as pass-throughs or escorts. Um, and one of the great things is that historically they've enjoyed uh, some uh, favorable tax arrangements compared to C corps, which are more complicated and have different regulatory burdens. Um, so after the 2017 TCJA, uh, tax cut, taxes on individuals, corporations, big and small, were cut across the board. Um, and while the big uh, corporate tax cuts were made permanent, things like the pass through uh, deduction here, which is 199A, which is what the Main Street Tax Certainty Act would seek to fix, were not. Um, so at the end of 2025, that's going to snap back and it's actually going to be effectively a penalty on anyone operating a business that's structured as an S Corp or not structured as a C Corp. Um, and we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to preserve the, uh, the, the, the fairness and the, the equity that we fought so hard to, to maintain when the TCJA came through. I mean, for years and years, there's been a, there's been a, um, a structure that made it possible for small businesses to operate without the ad additional uh, regulatory logistical hurdles of, of a C corporation structure. And we want to make sure that that uh, that, that maintains, uh, that we maintain that. Um, we also have one that's been a perennial thing for us. So the Corporate Transparency Act or the CTA uh, is something that was passed back in 2020 as part of the 2021 uh, defense bill. Uh, that's a must pass piece of legislation that's hundreds and thousands of pages long. So a lot of members, uh, to be perfectly frank with you, don't read that. Um, and one of the things that got snuck into it in 2020 um, was the Corporate Transparency Act, which had very, very little to do with the national defense. Um, the, the folks who crafted it claimed it was a money laundering bill. Uh, while we absolutely support uh, issues to uh, combat or uh, well, we support initiatives to combat money laundering, um, this is an incredibly broad statute that really, really burdens exclusively small business owners by making sure that they have to file lots more paperwork and report a whole bunch of things about the uh, beneficial owners of their company, meaning it, it, that's a vague term that means people that actually have equity stakes, I believe over 20%, or folks who exercise substantial control over the operation of the business. So that could be uh, someone volunteering services as an advisor. That could be someone stepping in in a whole host of different roles. It, it's a really complicated uh, structure that we think is, is unconstitutional and fringes on our members' rights. So uh, NSBA has sued over the issue. Um, arguments closed in federal court back in May. Uh, we're still waiting on a decision from that. And we'll make sure that we get that out to people and, and continue to message that as far as it goes. But we're, we're probably going to have to continue to take this further and, 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 and press this. Um, but the more folks that we can kind of educate about how uh, damaging this is, 
the better, because a lot of the members uh, in Congress right now weren't members of Congress back uh, when this was passed. So there's a lot of folks who this is this is fresh in their minds. There's a lot of folks who, when they were here, possibly didn't read it or possibly glossed over it as part of the overall must-pass defense package. So the more education we can do on that, the better. We feel like we've got a stronger case every day on that. Uh, one thing not listed here that I also wanted to cover. So um, R&D is, is a very, very significant portion of a lot of our members' businesses. And for folks on the call who uh, operate in the R&D space, um, there are, uh, there's, a, there's a fix for uh, the amortization issue that we have uh, talked about at nauseum here at NSBA um, that's being proposed uh, to, to fix the one versus five year amortization of R&D expenses. Um, right, buddy. Um, and uh, so that that is also coming up. That is uh, that was uh, introduced as part of uh, Ways and Means Chairman Jason Smith's suite of economic packages earlier in the year. Uh, it's also been something that um, uh, ranking member uh, Democrat uh, Richie Neal on the on the Ways and Means Committee has indicated that his caucus would be interested in supporting as well. So we feel like we've got really good bipartisan consensus, and we can use that as uh, the foundation for a lot of uh, a lot of progress on a, on an economic package later in the year. Um, so for folks in the R&D space, if you want to talk about uh, amortization issues and, and bring that up to folks and just make sure they understand exactly how important it is to your business, please, please do. Uh, there are other R&D issues coming up, uh, but that's that's the that's the main one for us that we're we're really targeting. Um, and with that, I uh, I think uh, I can pass it back to Todd here. Thank you very much, Reed. Uh, I just want to take a few minutes to highlight what I think is one of the very best ways that you can, can engage uh, your members of Congress, show your uh, connection to the overall small business community, show your leadership, uh, and show your commitment uh, by, by coming to DC, which is our upcoming annual Washington presentation that we're hosting next month, September 13, 14, here in Washington. Um, the program, I, we get great reviews for the meeting every year. I mean, the uh, we'll kick things off with uh, 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 the present award presentation where we where we recognize the small business advocates of the year. We're working now on details to have a, a briefing from the administration where we'll go over and uh, uh, and hear an inside briefing from from top White House officials. Uh, we'll do much more in depth updates on the issues and what's happening in Congress. Uh, you'll have a chance to network and have social time with, with other small business advocates from all across the country. Um, one fun thing we're, we're, that we're pulling together this year is it looks like we're going to be able to host a, a, a special uh, premiere screening of a new film that's coming out that's about uh, the, the difficulties one particular small business had combating a, a very large firm. Uh, and uh, we think we'll be able to get uh, all of our attendees to to attend this exclusive premiere screening of the, of the film here in DC, which would be a lot of fun as part of our evening uh, social activity that, that first night. The next day we go up and we have we'll have a congressional breakfast on Capitol Hill where we'll have in members of Congress from House and the Senate, Republicans and Democrats will have a, a, a wide array of, of folks talking about what they're actually working on. And you'll be able to, to, to talk to them and hear straight from them what uh, what's happening. And then we have a whole day uh, uh, where you can have appointments to your members of Congress. We're working to set those up on your behalf if you need that. Um, and so it's it's going to be a great event and uh, uh, you'll meet small business advocates from around the country, uh, get to talk directly with members of Congress and their staff, hear from members of Congress who are in leadership positions that maybe aren't your member of Congress. So you can get a sense of what's happening uh, very broadly. Um, and of course, from the administration and what they're priorities are for small business and what they're working on. So it's a great event. Uh, you can you can register on our website. Um, and uh, uh, one of the reasons it's so important is that when you come to Washington, th that signals a few things to members of Congress. It, it tells them that you're connected to organizations uh, that are larger than yourself, right? that you're speaking for a, for a broader constituency of small business, not just uh, your the, the particular needs of your own company. Uh, all those examples are, are great. That gives you a little bit of added of clout and additional additional uh, gravitas when you go into their offices. Um, but but just the mere fact that you are there, that you spent and that you took the time to come all the way to Washington to speak to them about these issues, is a demonstration of how critical they are, how committed you are. As a leader on these issues, um, and it's a really important building block 
in that uh, in that relationship we've been talking about this entire program. So uh, it, it really is uh, important, and we really do uh, um, uh, uh, urge you to uh, uh, to come. So with that, I think we want to have time for more questions uh, uh, and just see what's on your mind, see what we can address for you. Thanks, everybody. Those are some really fantastic comments, and I appreciate all of our speakers' time. Uh, the first question we have is, uh, it's about specifically about Washington presentation. Mm -hmm. When do we get more in-depth schedule and info on the Washington presentation, including dress code, where to meet, and when? Um, you know, I'll go ahead and take that one. Uh, we are planning to do a, a look ahead session just like this on September 6th. Uh, we'll be getting information out to everybody who's registered. Uh, we will give you all that information at that meeting. Uh, we will not, not likely have your Hill meetings if you request them. We probably won't have those until the day you arrive and maybe even that afternoon. Um, it's, uh, as, as I'm sure we'd read will attest, it's really difficult to make these meetings and to get things solidified um, even a couple days out and certainly more than a week out is, is pretty unlikely. So um, we'll give you all the information, dress code, where to be, what time, um, what events we're having where, uh, what time shuttles are gonna be, what time to meet the bus, all that good, inf good information uh, at that session on September 6th. So keep a lookout uh, if you are registered for that, uh, uh, an email about that event. Right. But, but I'd add a couple of things. One is of course, the, 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 the luncheon and the registration, the place where you originally meet is, is, the, is the conference hotel, which is the Hyatt uh dca hyatt and um and from there we provide transportation so so for the afternoon uh when we lock down this briefing for the administration we'll provide transportation there and back when it's time for the for the congressional uh breakfast on uh on thursday morning of the 14th that's on capitol hill there'll be uh transportation up to capitol hill for that so we'll get you there so there's not a there's not a difficulty trying to figure out where to be and, and how to be there and all those kinds of things um, Les, you did post a question in the chat, and um, I'm going to have Ian follow up with you after the call since it's specific to your registration. Um, so I, I see your question, and we will answer it, but Ian's going to um, will follow up with you after the session. Um, any other questions before we do our go to the order comments? Uh, okay, so there's a couple here. That's great. Uh, where do you suggest I start to educate myself on the issues for small businesses? Um, NSBA website, elsewhere? Um, I, I'm going to answer this for the whole NSBA team. Yes, the NSBA website. Um, like like we'd mentioned, we have um, a ton of issue briefs. We do a lot of surveys and research, so there's data. Um, a great thing to do is to subscribe to our weekly e-newsletter, the um, um, the NSBA Weekly Advocate. Um, you're going to get the latest news, the breaking news on small business issues. Um, if you're part of our leadership council, we've got an exclusive leadership council LinkedIn page. Um, if you're not, follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook. We post news updates there all the time. Um, so I think those are some great places to start. Um, Todd or Reed, did I miss anything on that? That sounds great to me. Great. Um, uh, the next question says, for NCR locals, do we need to stay in a hotel? Um, you don't need to. Uh, if, if I'm assuming, you know, if you're in the, the Northern Virginia, DC, Maryland area, um, if you feel like doing the drive, you're certainly welcome to. Our meetings at the Capitol start early. Um, I, we have to be there about 7.30. Um, so just be mindful of that in terms of transportation and driving. Right. Uh, and then, yeah, so. Now, I, I would recommend if you're not coming to the hotel uh, to stay, that you nevertheless come to the hotel to catch the bus to Capitol Hill because there's no parking on Capitol Hill, uh, and it'd be good to be with the rest of us. So that any if there are any last minute announcements or all the rest of it, we can take care of that. Thanks. The next question is: How can we request meetings with uh, Congress members or members of DC uh, federal agencies? So for the Washington presentation, um, if, if when you registered, there was a little checkbox that said, "Yes, I do want NSBA to schedule my meetings." If you check that box, we will schedule your meetings for you. Um, if you haven't registered yet, be sure to check that box if you want us to schedule those meetings. Um, uh, otherwise, we don't schedule meetings for people outside of this um, event, and the meetings we schedule are restricted to uh, not restricted, but the um, the only we have resources to do them for your senators and representative, and that's it. We don't we don't typically make meetings for members um, with regulatory bodies or anybody outside of Senate and uh, the House. Um, another question: How likely to, is it for us to get a meeting? Uh, it's it's very likely. Um, you may not get 
uh, all three meetings with uh, your representative and the two senators, but you'll get meetings with their staff members. And as a former lobbyist, and I'm sure Esther and Todd and Reed will all attest to this, uh, sometimes that can be a little bit more beneficial meeting with the staff because they're the person who's really in there and really working on those issues and have a really intimate knowledge of it. So um, we will get you meetings. Uh, we may not be able to get all three, but we're definitely going to get you a couple meetings. So that's um, that's a priority of ours for sure. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions. So, um, Todd, maybe I'll turn it back over to you for any final thoughts. Go to the order. Well, we, we appreciate you taking the time today uh, to talk to us about this. Uh, and for those of you who are coming to Washington, thank you. For those of you who haven't registered yet, please do come. Uh, again, it's a great event. Um, and uh, as you think about building these relationships, just think about the building blocks. One thing we didn't talk a lot about is is getting them to come to your business as well. They, they love to visit businesses. So if you have a, a, what I'll call a photogenic business, especially, um, you know, you can use that time to, to, to show them around and talk about your problems. Uh, they can meet customers and, and, and uh, employees, all of whom are constituents of theirs. So even if you think they might not be interested, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great thing to do. Uh, and you can bring that up in your meeting in Washington with the staff, uh, then they'll, turn you over to the to the to the staff back in the state uh, and it's a way to build that relationship and so you have that bridge between the the local office and the dc office and they see you as a national small business leader and it's it's a nice synergy so with all that hope we've given you enough things to think about one other last thing i will add is that for those of you who are coming to the washington presentation there's going to be an additional uh briefing call a week out from that meeting as well, like there's a virtual meeting where we'll have many more details about some of the specific speakers, exactly what's going to happen, how you should prepare and all of that. So uh, if you, it's already on your calendar, look for that as well. Um, and uh, we hope you can join us for that as well. So if there's no further questions, thank you all for being here and uh, go out and make it a successful August. Appreciate it. <laughs>